All right, another unboxing on the channel. It has been a while. This is exciting because this is one of the games I've been looking forward to a lot, and I am very glad that I did not miss it. I've been out, as you guys know, doing a, a very unexpected move that it ended up for the best for sure, especially actually when it comes to filming, but it does mean I missed quite a few game deliveries and I missed quite a few prototypes. I took a pause, but the industry did not, so very excited to actually open this up. Oh, it's a heavy. For a prototype, it's pretty crazy. I'm not gonna lie. It's a, uh, it is a lot, but it'll be worth it, right? If I can open it up, you guys know the struggle. There we are. Through the seal. Now, let's see. Nice cardboard. That's good. All right. Lots of packaging by the looks of it. Very well put together. So just taking up some space there. All right, looks like we got like boxes and boxes and boxes, huh? So, oh man, look, they're numbered. So this is number three. Bigger than I thought it was gonna be. So we'll open that third. We're gonna open it in order. You know, I always, always love prototypes because they're all so different. And I've always appreciated that. Here's one, all right. Stuck and stuff, man. I'll tell you. Here is what, what number is this? Two. And the main one, as you can see down here at the bottom. Oh, jeez, it's heavy too. Okay. All right. There we are. It's just like sticky, but it grips onto everyone. Get off of there. All right. Oh. Ah, I got it. Oh. In my defense, it's kind of awkward to film this. <laughs> but. This is exciting. Mythic Battles is set. Again, I don't know if I'm saying that right. If I'm saying it wrong, you let me know. How do you say that? I-S-F-E-T. I don't know. Okay, be careful here. But, I'll get through this tape. Okay. Get through it there. Get through some of it here, perhaps. Somewhere. Here, everywhere, there we are, I think, probably on this side too, yep. Ugh, you know, this bubble wrap stuff just adds to the drama. How so long does this take to open? <laughs> okay, that being said, I think we we're through. Wow, this is big. I think, guys, this is bigger than the prototype box. You can see right there, prototype box. I got from Ragnarok. Let me know, I unboxed that quite a while ago. I actually have received Ragnarok. Sadly, it went to my old address, so I do not have it here with me right now. I hope to get it soon, though. All right. Whew. Mythic Battles is fed. Great art. I'll tell you right now that I really do like the art. I like this kind of... Embroider here, it's kind of like a war chest kind of thing. I actually do really dig that. Um, I don't know what this is here and here, but it's because it just barely goes to the top, it's actually a little distracting to me. I'd almost prefer it not to, or a little bit more overtly, one or the other. But it's okay, it's all right. On either side, you just have the Isfet there, prototype box. They brand that each time on that, it's cool. I love, by the way, it still already has that, uh, you know, gloss logo here. This is like a stretch goal that they add all the time, right? Even the little monolith logo there. Again, for a prototype box, not too bad. All right, and then 
on the back, well, right here you can see a little bit of the little blurb there, all right? But hopefully, hopefully, sometimes these prototype boxes are kind of iffy when you turn them around and stuff, but this one seems okay. Oh, it's upside down. Oh, no, it is perfect. Okay. They have a little bit about it. This is kind of interesting. I think on a prototype box, it actually makes quite a bit of sense just because the person might not be familiar with what Mythic Battles is, in which case this kind of explains it, but it even has a list of contents or whatever. So super excited to see this. Uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. All right. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right. So inside of the box, actually quite good. This is already better than a lot of the Kickstarter delivery boxes I get. And it's just a prototype, so that's pretty impressive. On the side here, you can see some of the renders. Looking great, that alligator looks super cool, of course. Anubis looks awesome. I like the mummy. Let's see what's on the other side. Uh, different minis, so that works. Another little crocodile looking dude. and. Uh, even this guy, he's pretty cool too. Let me open up slightly more so you can see it. But again, I know it's still at an angle. Either way, very, very cool to see that. I think this is actually right set up based off of the front that it was, but it doesn't really matter, I suppose. Okay, so again, it is a prototype, of course, so keep that in mind, things can change. All right, so as you can see, these are printed out and then just kind of stapled. Uh, but it's all full color. It looks nice, actually. I think like it's pretty well. They do have play rates here. This is a, a really nice. Um, you know, player aids are kind of interesting because on the one point, I think if you need player aids, maybe, maybe cut down on the rules a little bit, depending on how much is on there. On the other hand, I like really cool rules. I like good rule sets. Um, and unlike a video game, there's no like tutorial or anything like that. So a lot of times these are helpful. I will say in a prototype, they are incredibly helpful just because it's so critical that when I do get play sessions in that they are played correctly if it's sent to a reviewer, obviously. So either way, you get two of these, which is perfect. Normally it's one versus one. Oh, and, and these, by the way, I mean, they're quite big. There's a lot here, a lot of words, but my little pointy stick here. Um, I can see everything well, and I do like the page numbers listed here. So if you zoom in a little bit, just so you can see it a little bit better, you'll see that it does list page numbers. Um, I like the blue and uh, white kind of alternating here and stuff like that. It looks good, but it's nice to see the little page numbers listed so you can go and actually look it up a bit more, uh, which is kind of nice to see. Uh, a whole lot of boundaries, the different terrain, the different talents, right? Very cool. Obviously a subset of everything, right? There's going to be more to the actual game and campaign. Now we have a rule book and we have a scenario book. So let's do the rule book first. I love, by the way, when skirmish games have scenarios. Those are fun to play. Okay, so it looks great, looks great. Let's go ahead and start it at the back. Check to see if the prototype is in the next. Again, it is a prototype. Okay, so last page is credits uh, with artwork, sculptors, production manager, developer and art director, graphic art direction, rules, editing, translators and proofreaders, scenario and campaign writers, flavor texts, and a many thanks to a whole lot of people based on the game created by Benoit. All right, so if we scroll here, coming soon index, look at that, so they know. And I'm cool with that, I think that's great. So they haven't bothered to make it yet. Often in a lot of programs, it's pretty much a click of a button to get 80% there. Um, it just depends on the program, but that's okay. It looks like the print, maybe cut off the numbers a little bit too. Again, totally fine. Whoop, it is a prototype and it doesn't open up super well too, but that's fine. I'm glad they do that. Look at that, we got draft examples. This is fun. So, all right, you'll have to excuse me. I adjusted the camera. Hopefully it looks a little bit better now. The draft is really cool because this is an army builder, but a lot of times um, giving people an example that then they can adjust, very good. And it's a good way to show off different aspects or different build strategies so people can see a more large variety of the game. Sometimes they have a tendency to only build a certain way and they didn't even think of another scenario or something like that. So having draft examples, super cool. I do like that. Here we have various setups that you can do. And now, from now on, I'm gonna go from the front. So on the front, you actually have some story. Again, you got some art. Obviously, it's just a, a print here. We have 
a table of contents that look uh, done pretty well, which is cool. It starts with presentation, then a game overview, setup, how the game is played, and then detail on actions and commands. And then following you have lookups for like battlefields, talents, classes, skirmish setup, draft examples, and then that index. So that's cool. Uh, this is already doing good because it has the picture, the name, and the amount that I get. So I know that this is an activation card, whereas this is a Tejati card. Um, hopefully I'm saying that right, right? Or a Kepper cards or Art of War cards. So I know what they look like and then how many of each one I should have. Same with the tokens, the dice, etc. cetera. Uh, these 34 miniatures, uh, six 3D statues, and 10 3D palm trees. Very fun. And then two game boards. Uh, if this is the table of contents for the prototype, that's a pretty impressive prototype, I would say. Okay, presentations. This is the objective of the game, right? Hierarchy of rules, like basic stuff you need to know while going through it. And again, the artwork, especially the verses looking here, looks super cool. Here's a game overview where it talks about an example of game during play in skirmish mode. So it's kind of, hey, here's the lay of the land. Looks like it starts fairly high level and then goes into details. Here's units. You have titans, gods, heroes, and monsters. And as you can see them here, and then it goes into like troops and stuff. Very cool. This is honestly really well done. I don't know if they have a technical writer or not, but they definitely have a good use of call out of car of uh, um, colors of different um, you know font types and or or you know weights and stuff like that. Obviously, a lot of different, like, you know, labels here. You got, what, what, 4A, B, C, D, E, right? So a lot of those. Uh, but hopefully, stuff like this, right, really helps um, describe things. Now, one of the things that's kind of interesting is call-out boxes. I, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm conflicted, and I'm no expert, right? But in my mind, a call-out box should call something out, but rules themselves or like integral things shouldn't necessarily be in them. So when you break down something and put a, a call out box to group it together, I'm kind of okay with that. But at the same time, I think these kind of things should be maybe treated slightly differently. So I'm unsure on that, but it's it's okay. Um, either way, this looks really good. I, again, I don't need to go into every single detail here, but um, it, it's obviously, uh, a, a fairly mature game, right? This is the third one that they've done now um, and pretty well done here. Again, here's all these battlefields and all the different things if they're obstacles, different talents and stuff. So skirmish setup. That's some great art. That's super cool. And then you can see some of those setups. So that is the rule book. Very, very cool. I think they did a good job there. Scenario book. Take a look at this. So there's the back, kind of continued art. If I can open up to the first page, that is the question. I can, this is a little thicker than maybe I anticipated. Okay, so we have a table of contents, we have the campaign, and then we have some scenarios as well. So you have a, a, the adventure mode, right? Where you play through a campaign, and then you also have uh, different scenarios that you go through. So here is the campaign, and again, it's got story, Let's look, it's for two people. First one is the hunt, and that's how you set everything up. There is your forces, special rules and stuff like that, a conclusion, right? Um, the winning side draws four cards instead of three in the next area for the fragments of the Book of the Dead campaign rule, and the losing side goes first in the next scenario. So as you play these in succession, it changes on um, like what you're doing, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's kind of neat that they do that. And then and they just have scenarios as well where you can just play the game skirmish-wise. So here's the judges for two to four players. So again, you could have four players playing that, which is kind of cool. And then here's one for two players, the power of monoliths. So and again, you have your starting zones there and there. So very cool. I dig it. Now, for the rest of this box. A lot of bubble wrap. A lot. Okay, so we got some cards here. Let's kind of see. There we go. How that plays out. Okay. All right. So we got some cards. We got those uh, like stat sliders, and it looks like little uh, scarab beetles are the things that you're collecting uh, on the map. That's usually a win condition. You have some dice. These are already marbled dice. They look very pretty. They're the 
standard kind of special uh, Mythic Battles style dice. Okay, you have one board here. You have two boards here. And you won't lay those out. You have three boards. Wow, that's quite a bit. This is quite the prototype, guys. There's the third board. Okay. Then we have. This is kind of interesting. Okay, so we have some tokens and some of the units here. So we have that. And then we have some more here, but two are missing. Oh, okay, they're right here. So um, I'm assuming this is somebody else's prototype. Maybe, well, maybe, I don't know. Somehow they fell out. I would say it was, but maybe not because um, these to stack, you know, like the trackers go in there. I'll show you that. So here's Cleopatra and Seth. And then you have, you know, Horus and Isis and uh, Ramses and all these other ones. So there are the units there. It looks like a third one fell out. I'm out. So that is it. The rest is an empty box of the core box, right? There is these other three boxes. I think that's the 3D train. Let's go ahead and start with some cards. Take a quick look at that. Oh, and of course, minis. Those are their minis are going to be in there too. Okay. Oh, come on. Now, campaign-wise, uh, I believe that they've said that this is going to be smaller, obviously, than Pantheon. So it was Ragnarok. They did it on purpose. They didn't want any that big. But at the same time, I think this might even be smaller than Ragnarok, but I'm not sure. So don't, don't quote me on that or anything. I'm going to zoom in to look at some cards here. Okay. Go ahead and... All right. Guys, I am so excited to be doing this again. You know how long it's been since I've opened up a game? My goodness. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I love getting a new board game. It's always so excited to see everything and read about it and then be able to play it and experience the new uh, mechanics and, and play styles and changes and stuff like that. When it comes to a skirmish game, I always say, you guys know, I always say variety is king. Very important, right? The more variety you can have, typically the better. Now, not at the, not at the cost of balance uh, too much. I'm okay with a little bit of imbalance too. I'm not some hardcore player or anything like that that needs everything completely balanced where things aren't fun. So I'm okay with a little bit of imbalance too. Um, and then, you know, you just, as long as you're playing friendly games with your friends and family, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Okay, so... These cards here are your like activation cards where you do different things, right? So, um, and again, it's been a while since I've played, so I do apologize for that. But that's normally what this is, I believe. Um, and then you have these over here. And then you have like, this is their like activation, right? So you have like a deck of cards to see when they activate. And they can have different, so see there's four here and three here. Isis gets four. Right, uh, Sobek gets uh, one, two, three, four, and then whew, Petschufs, I can't say these very well, also gets four there. And you'll see how many they get down here as well. So that's kind of how you know when you're busy actually recruiting them on how many they get, and the reminders there as well. Now, these are like Art of War cards, I believe is what these are called. Um, so sl slightly different there. Okay, then we have more so let's go ahead and see right there we get one card here it just says that this is the english version i guess that's nice and again all the rest of these and there are so many right i think they look great i like the variety of color that i'm seeing like the background of them and stuff like that right comparatively the brightness differences and stuff uh the art seems to definitely fit together so far which is good i like seeing that as well and again, I'm really liking the color changes, right? So a lot of these are dark, but some of these have a lot of blue in them, which is kind of cool. And you have these uh, troops, which you can equip with different things. That was one of the big things in Ragnarok, and I'm glad to see that they are uh, using that here as well. Same with this, is they're also like different things. So, as you can see here, 
These are like the upgraded like leader people that you can do and attach them to different units, right? That they do different things. So here, for instance, if you attach K here, it says this troop gains the guard talent. And so you can put that in other ones and really kind of customize things. That's super cool. This troop gains a flying class. That's pretty hardcore. Uh, so very cool to see those. Um, recalling this troop does not require discarding an Art of War card. It may not be attached to a group with a guard talent. So sometimes they put some things there, uh, you know, to be able to change things a little bit. And then here, again, are some stats of um, the uh, uh, troops and stuff like that that don't change. Here's another one of those. So these obviously don't have a tracker that goes, you know, worse or better. And instead, it's based off the people that you have, which are right there. Again, it's, it's kind of coming back to me. It's It's been a bit. I've been... I've been busy moving, <laughs> much to my dismay. All right, and then here, again, more customization. So if I come here, all right, you see here, here's Cat. This unit ignores the first wound caused by each attack or reduces the Art of War power cost by two. And let's say you have different costs here. This player chooses the Mighty Throw or Terror Talent for this unit. So a whole lot of different things you can do to customize your units. And I, I imagine this, matches something as well because those do seem to change based off of who can have it i think so very cool customization deck there i really like that that's awesome and then i think the only other cards here again this that you know it, it's funny mythic battles for a skirmish game particularly a lot of these board games do a lot of token stuff not a whole lot here when it comes to that a lot of this is just minis and cards and dice anyway here's some more uh i think i already showed these i did So here is another uh, version, and as you can see, that's the difference here. This is what threw me off, Set and Seth. Set, I know, Seth, not so much. So this is the other language here uh, that is, as you can see, in French. So these I can safely, I can safely take this card and ignore the entire set. There we go. Okay, we're good. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yeah, here's some more. Here's Horus there. Yeah, that's freaking sweet. Very, very cool. Again, I love the art. It all fits so well. I'm glad to see people facing left. I know I saw others facing right, right, set, faced left as well. Often you'll see tendencies, if, especially if they have a limited uh, artist set, to only do one or the other. Everybody's, like, looking to the left or whatever. So the fact that you have that, I actually really appreciate. Adds a lot of visual variety there that you may not realize otherwise so very very cool to see them as well okay that is all the cards that was easy guys take a quick look at the dice that's quick and easy and love these dice i have again a lot of mythic battle stuff so i have lots of dice i will gladly add these though they're really cool green dice uh if my wife could use these for her death guard she totally would um, but, but, uh, you know, obviously doesn't quite match the, uh, the, the facing, but very cool. I like them. I think they're cool. All right. Let's look at these little scarab guys. I dig this. I think it's cool. They must be some magical stuff. Uh, the, the story is in Mythic Battles, if you weren't aware that all the like divine beings, right? All the different pantheons and stuff like that have lost their powers and so the, these are like nuggets of the power that they can get back and become strong again. So that's kind of what they're going for there. These are cool. I like them. Yeah, they're just these little resin resin guys, but they came out well. Um, they're fairly flat, uh, but that's okay. I think they'll paint up quite well, quite easy. Uh, it's interesting that they're uh, scarabs are not little gems. Normally they're little gems, so it's kind of interesting to see uh, the difference there. So anyway, those guys are cool. I like them. Move them over here. Try not to make a mess. Okay, now we have the different cards, so I'll take one of these out to show you how it works. Gotta get the backings as well. There we go. Okay. Let's see where I'm gonna do this. So let's take let's take uh, let's take Cleopatra here. Okay. So again, front and back. Um, this is something that's kind of a bummer. There's uh, when when they cut these, right, there's a little soft rounded edge and there was a hard edge on the back. So when you do dual language, which again, I think it makes sense and helps them save money, which is good because we want these companies to actually be successful. <laughs> However, it does mean that the English side has kind of the rough edge on the top. It, it, it's fine. So what you do is you put this on there like so. Hello. 
should go on. Maybe just gotta really punch it. Maybe it's too fat. Um, here, let's let's try and see. So this goes in these little stoppers. Try on that side. Thought it went all the way in, but maybe not. So maybe again, it's been a while. And again, this is prototype too, so don't judge anything. But I'm trying to show you the slide feature that it has. If I can, I will. Yeah, so see, that's supposed to like, I think, go in more. But it's not really going in. There we go. Maybe I just have to really push it in. There we go. Maybe like that. See, that doesn't. <laughs> uh, first of all, it's upside down. Jeez. Idiot. All right. There we go. Maybe that's all I needed. Now, again, prototype, so it's not changed this there. But the idea, anyway, is then you, you put this in, and then you can kind of slide it without it being too bad. One more. Okay, so now you should be able to slide this up and down. Again, mine's not, <laughs> and that's probably just a my bad. Maybe even it's just this one, I don't know. But that's the idea, right? Is you're able to see your power level change as you get hurt and they can flip things around they can make it where you get stronger as you get hurt right so all sorts of stuff meanwhile you have again how many uh activation cards how many art of war cards different abilities here and then different unique talents here so these are common and then these are unique just to cleopatra right it's kind of the 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 setting there so very cool i love this system i think it works really well it's really clean um, and there's not too much wasted space. It, it can get a little big, right? And, and just how much it is, because you can have more units and then you have troops and stuff like that as well, um, with all their equipment and stuff. But really, it's just a little bit of art here. Um, and there is uh, also a thing here as well. I forget exactly what that was. Meanwhile, this symbol here matters as well. It's kind of how you do it, right? So, and then if you need Art of War card and how many of them you need to spend to actually use them. So. Very cool, that's them. Move that aside, move that aside, and we have tokens. Tokens are pretty basic. Here they are, right here. Um, these are fairly squishy, but again, it's also just a prototype. Um, and I don't really, I mean, I can see the layers, but it's not actually like too bad there. Um, they're just maybe slightly squishier than I have seen is all. These, by the way, really good. Like these, these are pretty solid. She really like those. All right. With all of that out of the way, we do have the boards and then I think the rest is just mini. So this is going pretty quick here. Let's go in and take a look at these boards if I can. Again, I know they're gonna be a little big, so let's see here, not terrible. It's great because three of these mean you actually have six maps, which is pretty impressive. All right, let's zoom out here, see what we can see. Hey, that's pretty good, actually. Look at that. Okay, so here is the board here. Very cool. I've always really appreciated the shadows, right? It really gives a really good, uh, like... Uh, height like this feels like it's higher right it looks higher and they've done a really good job with that both in their perspective and otherwise i believe they are one of the companies that actually make their maps in 3d and then have a program that makes it 2d if that makes sense where it's almost like printing out the 3d map uh, which i always thought was cool because it'd be cool to actually play in a actual 3d map and i know there are people that go hardcore enough to do that so that's really cool they have how many like i believe people can be in each one uh they have different you know arrows to show facing and stuff like that, but it's not so much that it like, you know, you know, messes up everything. They do have a special symbol here. Um, and I believe that's probably where you put these guys is what I would suspect. But maybe that changes. I can't quite remember. Um, no, they're just different terrain things. Cause see, there's one here too for like the, the well, it probably heals you or something like that. Either way, very cool. And then on this side, let's see what this one is. Wow. All right, so that one's exciting. So this one, as you can see, high and then goes low. 
And so this is a lower than this, right? And you can see all the different height things here as well. And of course you have red outlines on certain spots and you know, just various things you can do. Otherwise you can actually be on the uh, giant statue as well. That's a cool one though, I, especially this is crazy, right? Don't, yeah, that's that's fire, don't, don't, don't step there. Okay, let's go and look at the other one. That was, those are actually really nice. Okay, all right. So I am seeing quite a, a variety of difference here uh, in style, which is nice. So again, and this one, now uh, if there's one thing I will say, it's normally you feel like there's a right way and an up way, and especially with the numbers only being a certain way, right? So this is the correct way to kind of look at this map, though obviously somebody is not going to be looking at it that way. They'll be looking at it slightly upside down. So kind of interesting. Anyway, again, the shadows and stuff really do help sell that and that's why i believe like it's literally so even like the shadow of the birds above it's literally like they have a light source and the, it just like you know it casts that perfectly so they don't have to like interpret that but the, the trees right adding to the shadow and then blending with that one and stuff and even being above that just very very cool details like that i really appreciate it um i i think it's great it is a little um com computerized right like especially when they highlight a shape like this it often feels like it pops out a lot. But even if you look at like some of these pots and stuff like that, like down here, um, let me zoom in just to show you kind of what I mean. Okay, so if we go in this close, see some things, I feel like that doesn't look too bad, right? But then you get stuff like the pots and sometimes that's just the stuff they add on top of it, like that just look very computer graphics to me, right? It looks like obviously they used a computer to add these shapes here or whatever or these pots and stuff like that so sometimes like it doesn't bother me at all and sometimes i really notice it so it just kind of depends okay let me zoom out now and go on to the flip side of this which oh this is a fun one let me try and get it the right side up for you guys right away here we are. This is the that you know up to four player one where you can have people here, here, and there, and then all right in the middle, and that'll be kind of crazy. So <laughs> that one's pretty intense for sure. They have these interesting bridges with a special like you know gear thing. I forget what that was. So a whole lot of different tr different types of terrain and whatnot to deal with there. But again, very cool map and definitely looks and feels different. Looks like it play quite different as well. Okay, last map, the minis. All right. So here's this one. Very cool. Very much like a kind of a and near the Nile kind of thing, right? Where you have a whole lot of water in different spots. So very water heavy this one is with these little islands that you're going to kind of be on. And then notice there's no land like actually connecting any of these. So uh, that's kind of cool. I really like the face here and then the, how the water interacts with that as it flows. That's pretty cool. All right, then finally we have this one as the last one. This has a very cool stream going through it and then two different kind of sections here, which are kind of cool. And again, I really like when there's a map feels like there's different areas, right? So you have this area here and this area here, but then you have this area here that's a lot more square and open. We're gonna have quite a few people. And then you have a more jungle area here and then more ruins area here with some height. Then you have the stream. Like, it's just, I, I feel like the maps are actually designed pretty well. So you have the ruins and stuff like that. Looks cool. And again, a wide variety. I am excited to play on those. Those look like a lot of fun. Okay. Start with one. All right. Them's the rules. Okay. Open. Let's see. What's in box number one? A lot of bubble wrap! Look at that, because the minis need to come in safe. That's very important. All right. So all of these are probably going to be resin. That's normally how they are. There is quite a bit by the looks of it. A lot of these might be repeats, but a lot of them might not be either. So it just kind of depends. But there are quite a few. I think there's multiple in those. See, that's probably like a whole troop there. That's kind of cool. And as you can see, resin does break. So there are a few pieces I will have to glue. I apologize for that. 
This did ship right to me at this new location, so I didn't have to, it's not my move or anything in that sense. It just happens, right? So there's like a tail or something like that, and uh, I don't even know what piece that is. But I'm gonna set them back in there so I don't lose them. Let's go ahead, I saw a big one. Let's open up one of the big ones. Why not? Okay, I think it's probably gonna be, you know what, if these are going to be, that I will, might do that off camera so you guys get a more sped up look at things. So let me open this just so you can see what's in here. It's probably gonna be more. Oh, this is foam. Aha, aha, this is gonna be, I think, big minis here. Or a big mini, what, are you serious? No, because there's more underneath. Okay, I was like, really? <laughs> uh, but a big mini there for sure. And then in here, oh, we have, more bubble wrap, including a very big mini by the looks of it. So I'm gonna open these up and then we'll get to each box. All right, guys, I have them unboxed and I am, I haven't opened any of them yet, I was sure, so that you guys see my live reaction. The third box has all the big minis in it, all the big monsters, that's gonna be super exciting. So stay tuned for that, because I'll do one, two, and then three. It looks like two has at least one big one. So let's start with this one here. And actually, let's zoom in a little bit more. Give you guys a close-up look at it. There we go. All right. These are 3D printed. I could see the bottom of the base. They do have all of the little, uh, you know, uh, postmarks, right? Support marks where it's all supported and getting kind of see them there as they're you know, scratched off or trimmed or whatever. And I tend to trim mine really, really hardcore. And uh, it's not necessarily what they did here, which is fine. Either way. Uh, it's a good resin though. I don't, I don't know what resin they use, but a, a good printer too. But, and often, again, they print on like a side like this, so it's going to be a little rougher on this side. So just as an FYI, but 3D prints have really allowed a lot of game makers to make early prototypes with, you know, good minis. They're actually still fairly solid. Uh, one of the other nice things here is how well it'll actually translate to the miniature uh, itself. Because obviously you can do stuff with 3D printing you couldn't do with a mass injection mold, right? And so that's obviously the thing here. The big thing here that I see is the tongue needing to be thickened, right? These teeth probably um, being nubbed down a little bit and also possibly the pointy, pointy ears here. But that's it. Otherwise, this is a very cool model. I love the inlaid little symbols there. And again, that might need to be thickened up a little bit or uh, put in depth. A lot of the uh, manufacturers, the actual factories over in China, they have sculptors that actually make these possible. They part them out and stuff like that because most game designers don't know how to do that. They're not the experts, whereas the factories do it day in, day out, every day. So it kind of makes sense that they're the experts in that. A lot of times they might suggest to get that up. That being said, my experience working with manufacturers, you got to tell them to do that. They'll gladly print this, and then that detail just kind of gets lost. These ridges all look very good. Um, the lines here will support porting, parting really well. I love the uh, terrain that it's on. I think that's great. I like the little skull in the front. That's fun. And it's overall just a great pose because really you're looking at it, you know, not like this, but like this. So he's turned slightly and you can see the, oh, this is cool. I like the, the scales in the back. Those look very nice. Um, and then the, this tail here, again, very, very cool. You can definitely even pick them up like that just fine. Very cool mini. I like that one. Um, and yeah, on the rocks here too. Uh, it does look a little bit like hey, he's got these like footholds where he's like standing on, all right? So uh, there's one here that's unused, which is kind of nice. It might have been nice to make it. one other one. So it doesn't like there's like purposely put for his feet. But that's just a design thing there. Let's see what this one is. So there's two in here. And I don't know if they're the same or not. I suspect they are. These are just some uh, little, little like statue things. So again, 3D printed. So you're going to see some of the layers sometimes like that. Um, but these are cool. I like these. So they are the same, so we can only look at one, that's fine. And as you can see, they have, it's like broken inside, which is cool. It has all these like little cracks, which is cool. I dig that. It's got the like uh, hieroglyphs, but then it's all like cracked and crumbling too. Even the base there um, looks very cool. And if you look at the comparison between the monster, it's actually not too bad of a size. And again, we'll put it next to a person as well. So we'll keep that to the side for now. Do we get another person? This is not going to be a person. This is going to be another one of those uh, little 
snake guys, <laughs> which is totally fine. All right, here we got a combination of bubble wrap and toilet paper, Kleenex, one of the one of the two. Both work pretty well, typically. All right, here is our first kind of character. Um, and again, uh, still a lot of basing when it comes to being on a base like that. That's very cool. These like little whip things look super cool. Um, the cloak is gorgeous. That's going to take highlighting and a wash super duper well. This little sun symbol right here doesn't need to be thickened up, I feel. Uh, it's just it's just a little too faint for my taste. Um, it, 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 by the time it's made into a, a plastic injection, it's going to need to be that way. And, th and th they very well might. I'm just saying it from the get-go wasn't designed that way. That's part of that kind of process it can take to take a long time to make these minis. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of like supports still hanging off, so don't, don't worry about those. The face looks good. The ears look good. Um, yeah, overall, he's really cool. This is separate, so it need to be kind of a separate piece probably, but uh, that's okay too. Yeah, very cool guy. And again, statue compared to him at his height is actually almost a one-to-one, -one, right? Which is kind of cool. Um, uh, though he has his helmet, his arms would be like this, right? Which really... That's, yeah, it's it's human height, really. So, because obviously there's, he's like on a pestle here too, so. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. Let's see what these are here. Ah, palm trees! These are fun, look at that. They do have a skinnier base uh, than others, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if it's just all the trains like that, I don't know if it's temporary, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe they're planning on doing something else with the bases. They are sculpted slightly as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. So as you can see here, it does have this like kind of sand sculpt going on here. So that's kind of cool. Let's see, there's a little hole there. And yeah, looks like it's in kind of both, but in different spots. So I don't, I think it's just a printing error. And again, you can, can you hear that? So that is the layer lines there, right? As it is 3D printed. Love the trunk. Like how it gets bigger there. All the connection here. She looks pretty good. I'm assuming this will need to be touched up a little bit. So it is smart in how these are laid out, right? So that this can actually print. So that's nice, right? Um, so it doesn't look perfectly like a, a palm tree might in the wild, but printed, they'll actually be able to print it. That being said, it might make sense to connect these more. It looks like that, oh no, I think it is connected. Yeah, they're connected. Okay, so that'll really help keep those a little bit more uh, support free. Uh, they do add a texture on the sides, but then the sides are actually kind of thick. Um, so they should be able to take the injection pretty well. Again, if there's this really long skinny thing, it's really hard to push the plastic into there. So uh, having the texture there and tapering it to make it seem like a good edge uh, often solves that. And underneath, there's still texture there as well. These are cool. I like them. And again, if you go by height, right, this is about how tall they are to a person. So, very cool. I like them. Okay, it looks like there's two more here. So, I'm not going to fully take them. Well, we'll, we'll do that. Maybe because I might need a shot afterwards of all of them, right? Why not? Why not? It goes quick. There you go. There's four of them. <laughs> Uh, let's see what this bad boy is. This is a big one. This is fun. Oh man, it's like a an ox kind of looking guy here. This is cool. Look at this. Oh, so see, it was his tail that fell off. So, I'm going to forget this. I bet it's this one. I bet... Go, oh, well, hold on. Oh, are these both the same piece? Aha! Uh Aha! -huh. Uh -huh. So this went like this, and then this went like that, 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 right there. So I'll glue him up, but anyway, he does have a tail. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. So minus the tail, though, if we look at this. Uh, again, really, really great. Love the detail work here. I think a lot of this will translate very well to the final miniature, so that's good to see. The underside, uh, I like the how these drape a little bit underneath. That's kind of cool. I dig that. Um, the the like uh, they're almost like rosary beads, right? But the the uh, jewelry is quite cool. 
The head is a separate piece, even on the resin print here. Again, love the specialness here. The mouth, I'm I'm not as okay with. I, I don't like the tongue hanging on like that. That's kind of weird. The eye holes are really impressive. Just overall, very cool, uh, very solid uh, mini. And again, textured, right? So it's just on sand, essentially. Very light sand texture. I might need that increased slightly. And it would have been nice on this if there was a sand texture on the sides of this. That would have been kind of appreciated as well. But, yeah, very big. And I mean, yeah, he's 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 big, right? Not a normal size. <laughs> Something going on there. All right. Got more palm trees. Can never have too many. I could use these for um, freebooters as well. So I'm kind of excited. I could use some palm trees. That's going to be cool. I like that. We're going to have a tropical island here, guys. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, these are cool. Definitely usable by me, so I'm excited. Uh oh look at that. One of the, the palm leaves fell off. Again, resin. Don't, don't expect that with your much more uh, stronger uh, PVC ABS. That's why they make game pieces like that. All right. Okay, so we got quite a few guys here. Or should I say ladies? Uh, let's see, are they all the same sculpt? It looks like they are. So, we'll take a look at one. Okay, so here is the mini here. I love the arrow, definitely too skinny. They could do ABS and get away with that for the most part, even then it might be a little too skinny. But thicken that up a little bit, it should be fine. She's holding it from the back, uh, that works really well. The tip looks like fine. Uh, obviously no bowstring here, but oh, no, it's out of focus, there we go. All right, so one thing they'll have to do is uh, thicken this up. They could do ABS and get fairly close to it. So we'll see if um, that's what they do. I think it would make sense. And you could cut off the arms here and here and just have that one piece and have this whole thing ABS. So that'd be probably be pretty nice. Um, the cloak, how it like edges into there. So it's still really thick. It'll print fine. It's not like a whole lot of negative space or anything like that. That being said, it, it looks good and it looks crisp. It comes to that line there. That's important. Um, otherwise it just looks really fat like this is maybe a little bit too much, but overall it's okay same with this They just don't want to look like they're like wearing blankets, right? Thin strap here. The hair looks great. The quiver arrows I really like the texture that they added there to make it look like there's multiple ones um, Yeah, no, this is cool. The feet look good uh, Let's see the face looks good. Well, actually the face looks really good. I love the earrings that she has as well. That's super cool uh, very cool mini. I actually really like these. I think uh, they're cool little archer people that look like archer people without having the very standard um, pose uh, that they often do. Um, and the the like terrain here is actually really good, nice and textured. I really like that one. All right, hey guys, Storm Thunder may never deliver, but at least we can get our Egyptian minis from here. All right, so we got that. We got more palm trees. And another broken branch. Sad day. Sad day. Uh oh, hello? One's not coming off. A ton of trees, oh my goodness, guys. Oh, two of them. Three of them. This one, this one got all jacked up. You saw it. It was like that when I got it. Blame me. I'll probably break a few more before I'm done, but not yet. But seriously, like, this is a lot of palm trees and I appreciate that the the little bit of terrain here very very cool so that's fun I like that okay let's move those back not breaking any more than I have to oh, oh, oh we'll see whatever okay that's that, they're over there now okay so this one's not palm trees aha more uh, little statue guys so we got plenty of those as well these will be at the ruins and you'll have different amounts, I believe, depending on something or other, if I remember correctly. Okay, they take up a spot, I believe, actually, I want to say. All right, then we have these, like, Anubis-looking kind of character guys. Looking very cool. These fingers are awesome. They are, I do have two fingers attached here, which I think will help with the print, so that's good. Um, again, the texture here, really, really good. Maybe a little fine, a little bit of work there will do wonders. The terrain is good. This, like, 
you know, skirt kilt thingy, whatever he's wearing. Very well done here. Uh, nice crisp edge, a little bit of overlay here, and just an ever so slight edge in there. So it doesn't look like a flat block. The curled paper, that's super cool. I really do dig that. And of course the ears and the nose are super awesome as well. These three little guys are cool. I like them. I like them. All right, we got three more, including this one, for the first box. And then we're on to the second box and then the third box. Here are some mummies. Oh, and one more Anubis guy. There we go. Okay, so I only have two mummies in this one, at least so far. Uh, they look great. I love their weapon. Uh, it is not attached, by the way. Uh, it would make sense to attach it, but they're not doing that right now. Uh, this is not a post. This is actually draped down cloth from the back of his leg. That's super cool to see. I love that they're hanging down like that. That's super awesome. Uh, really do appreciate that. Uh, the face, especially with the open mouth, very, very good. Really dig that as well. Uh, yeah, overall, just super cool design. Uh, yeah, I really like them. I think it's great. The little plodding walk that they have is good. The real big indentation on the sand is cool. But again, it'd be nice to get maybe some some texture here. Yeah, you know, just, just a little bit. So it looked a little bit more like sand, possibly. Go ahead. All right, next up we have more mummies. Yay, more mummies. And then finally, more trees. These survived and they had no like toilet paper wrapping. Uh, that's hilarious that that, <laughs> that worked. And then the ones carefully, you know, done are, are all jacked up. That's funny. Um, remember guys, this is just the core game. Okay, and I already have a ton here, but we gotta go to number two. Number two is foam boxed right here. So I didn't bother opening this up at all because, well, it's not wrapped up. So let's go and see what's in here. We can't, uh-oh. So we got a broken blade here, but that's all right. Okay, so this is one of the big bad boys here, right? This is probably Anubis himself, um, or Set, I guess I should say. Um, so this obviously would have been like this. So I'll glue that, of course. But for now, we'll just take a look at the blade itself. Um, yeah, it's just just a plain blade. Uh, it's not very, it's not very uh, skinny on the edge. I would like it if it tapered a bit more. It tapers a tiny bit. Um, so it looks pretty good from the side, but from the front, it does look a little fat. Now it needs to be thick, right? Because unless it's ABS, which I would almost suggest just because obviously even the resin broke. In fact, shipping these off as resin is often a really good way of seeing what you need to thicken up and not in the final mini. Like in that case, it's kind of helpful, right? Um, but ABS would obviously work really well, but slightly, slightly better blade would look good. Otherwise, obviously, he's a larger than the average person, right? So he's a little intimidating there, which is uh, really how it should be. Very cool pose, very intimidating, aggressive pose here. Um, this is also broken off. Is there? Aha! Yeah, so he should have another fillet here. In this case, right here. Um, oh, I'm assuming this one is actually back. Yeah, it is. So it's like this, which is super cool. Everybody that's cool has their uh, weapon held backwards. That's just a proven fact. We discovered it in the 90s, I think, and we have been rocking it ever since. Um, again, love the textured base. I would like some sand on the side just so it's not some completely flat base. Now I can base it. I can add some texture uh, paint. That's super easy to do. I don't mind it, but not everybody will. So it'd be kind of nice to, you know, have that little bit of texture there. But either way, that's very cool. Uh, the sandals look great. Um, inside all of this is great. It's all textured in there, which is good. Even the leg fully in there, fully sculpted. Really appreciate that. The face, super duper cool. Again, it's a very cool pose. I like the flow out here. Again, it doesn't get too thick, maybe a little thicker there, but not too bad. Um, again, all of this cloth works well. Another support thing there. Uh, I like these little tassels out. The uh, uh, ribbed, you know, where it has like this rim that comes out. That's always very helpful. You can paint this kind of dark, 
really shadow it up. It looks just fine, especially with the wash, because it'll like pool on the edge. So it gets darker to lighter even, which is kind of neat. Anyway, it'll look good. Uh, love the helmet. Crisp lines everywhere. Looks super cool. I like them. Just need glue. <laughs> now there is more in here. Right, so we do have some guys here. Uh, I suspect these are some of the, uh, the the heroes as opposed to like troops, but we shall see. Yes, yeah, so that's just all him. Okay. So here's one of them here. Again, this came out well. Again, probably needs to be ABS or thickened up. I would like it not to be thickened up though, because that's already a pretty good size. So if it's ABS, it's perfect. Again, I really like these fully textured bases here. Um, I, I'm glad he's protecting what's important to him. That's <laughs> that's that's super great. I mean, if you're gonna hold a shield anywhere, there you go. That's it. Oh yeah, and I got some other shield. <laughs> so he is he's 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 uh protecting his noggin. He doesn't care about his chest at all. That can be freaking bare chested, no problem there. The muscle definition, by the way, very good. Um, I really like the spear tip. It's very cool because it's like. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly the shape you would call it, but it's it's angled here, here, and here at the back, which is pretty cool. Um, like that, uh, it's the straps are here and there, and even these little tassels there, just little little details like that, super cool. He's even got his like water flask here, very nice. I like him. All right, next will be. Oh, it's just another one of him. Well, fine. He's not that special. This person's different. Very, oh, this is this is like the commander, dude. I like this. All right. So, love, love, love this cape flowing over the shield here. Super cool. I really like that. That is beautiful. That'll look so good painted. So cool. I very much like that. That is great. Fantastic. It also helps connect this a little bit, which is kind of nice, but this is still quite a distance of unsupported. So again, it will definitely need to be ABS there or thickened up one or the other, um, definitely needed. But uh, seriously, this is super cool. It, it even here is really good. And again, when, when you're, when you're modeling this, especially digitally, it's very easy to forget the actual shape of something and have it like warp into it, right? Kind of like a, a, you know, clipping or no clipping, right? Kind of thing. Um, so it, it the fact that this has substance here, very, very cool. I love that. Um, I like the little kind of even drooped head, hunched shoulders. Um, yeah, the great, great mini. This, this one is, I really, really like that. Super cool. That's a fun one. All right. Uh, one of those guys. Never have too many. I got his little leader guy here. So we're good there. Okay. We got another little cape guy and another little cape guy super cool i do love those guys these are just various troops okay here's another person so this one's fun uh because it's got these like really crazy tassels there um i i don't know how i feel about that i mean it's cool i get that but i mean like why why are they blowing like that like what, what wind is causing that i don't know uh love the hat love that he's holding this uh little you know whatever you i don't know what you call it, the little potion ornament kind of looking thing here um the front of it looks really cool the back of it, it looks a, maybe a little plain i don't know it, it almost seems like it's not filled in there that's probably on purpose but uh, these, by the way, the texture on the fabrics are fantastic. Uh, she uh, has a very cool weapon. I really like seeing that. It looks cool. I love the wings coming off the top there. Very stylized Egyptian, right? Which, again, really appreciate. I think it looks cool. A little support there. Get rid of that. Um, yeah, no, that looks super cool. I really, I really, really like that. And again, the facial details have actually been quite, quite good. Okay. One more. Uh, no, no. There's, there's a few more. Just kidding, guys. Just kidding. All right, here's another one. This one with a staff. Love the staff. That looks great. Uh, I, I, again, facial features are good. Again, the thickness of the cloth is very good. The fingers look great, at least, you know, as, as you know, a resin 3D print. 
Um, very baggy clothing here, which is super cool to see. I really like the little like puffy jeans that they have there. She's on like a little pedestal. This might be a little square for me, but I'm wondering if this is a ruin of some kind. Actually, it must be because here's like a little column. So that's okay. I will forgive the exactness. Um, yeah, just looks great. Great pose. Lifting that up. I like that her arm isn't like perfectly straight like some like weird person, but it is slightly bent up. Um, yeah, just a really cool little mini. I like that one. Okay. Got another one of these guys. Again, never have too many apparently. <laughs> that troop has a lot of, a lot of them in there. And another guy. This one's kind of interesting because his blade is actually angled down and like like on purpose. Uh, which is a very interesting pose to uh, to use. So again, love the shields. I think they look great, like the straps and everything, and the bolts and all that looks good. Very good sense of motion uh, with this, with uh, um, his legs like that, but then the cloth swirling around, like you can tell he's making like a, a little bit of like a lunge thing. But I love that as he holds that out like like this, that it like leans down now again this is a little fat um it, it, it will probably look a little bit better because again there is some shrinkage um when it does the mass injection as it cools down it, it, it can it contracts a little bit so they'll have like a often like a three to six percent shrink rate um the three percent you know obviously uh being better um and that's a really uh resin as well we'll have that too technically so but it shouldn't be too bad uh, but yeah, a little bit more of an edge would be nice, but either way, cool. I like the pose, uh, the armor that's different. I like these little slash things. And again, lots of those wings, you'll see that kind of all over the place. Okay. That was box two. Now onto the final box. Excuse me. Now this one is fun. Now there's a bigger one that I didn't even fit back in here. So we'll do that one last. That's like the big, big one. All right, hopefully, oh, it is multi-tape. Oh, I was like, oh man, hopefully I did it all enough, but no, I'll tape it again. <laughs> That's all right. All the problems I have is a tape. Please tell me it's not. Okay, good. <laughs> oh yeah, alligator time, love it. Love it, this guy is super cool. Okay, all right, so hanging off the base, love that. The fact that this is so basic, and again, see on this one, See, the, so this kind of inconsistency is something I, I do want, you know, different. So see how this is flat base, and then this actually has all the way to the edge, this like sand texture. Um, I like the sand texture. That face is super cool, by the way. It's also hanging off the base, which is cool. Even this, it like turns into the rock and then comes up like that. Just very, very cool. The pose is great. I love how close those legs are together and then how spread apart these are as he turns his body. His tail's out here. I like all the straps. And notice he has like an onk and stuff like that. Like just all over his body. He's got all sorts of these like little medallions and stuff like that. Very, very cool. There's some more down here, right? Love the, the like post jetted out here. I think that looks great. These right here hanging down. Of course, inside the mouth, textured mouth, which looks very good. The tongue looks cool. Two rows of front teeth. That's gross. Um, the face looks great. The armor looks really cool. The horns are neat. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. All underneath is textured as well. Uh, some of this rock texture like this maybe needs to be thickened a little bit or it'll look too smooth in the final product. But other than that, um, yeah, this is a cool, cool mini. I really like this. And to give you a sense of how big of a crocodile this is, let's take one of the, the guys here. And that's about the size of this crocodile. So he is plenty big, right? I mean, you're about as big as his tail, <laughs> which is pretty cool. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's take this one out. I don't know what these are. This is probably another layer of tape. It is. There we go. And then the final one's not taped. This is a cool one. All right. Oh no. So. A little head ornament looks like it, it broke. So this would be on like that. And so that's kind of how it would be. If that makes sense. So I'm going to take that off now. Again, I'll glue it later. So one interesting thing here is the 
the wings coming forward. That is something you do not normally see, so that's very different and cool. The hands look fantastic. If they can pull that off with the fingers like that, that'd be super duper cool. Love the hair, and again, the, med the little medallions and stuff inside the hair. Uh, all the like necklaces and headgear and all that looks cool. Facial features look really good. Um, again, really like the hair. Uh, the hair on the bottom, I believe, is yeah, it's smooth, uh, giving it a little ripple texture. It just adds a little. It's one of those things where I instantly kind of look under that big flat like stop there and should have a slight texture to it right and then it'd be cool the feathers look great the texture on them are great inside and out looks really good um, again another big hair thing here and just a little bit of texture here would go a long way i feel um totally fine with it being you know uh you know cut off like that this by the way this is also super cool it does tend to come out a little bit instead of going straight across so so there's a when you turn to the side you can kind of see the poofiness a little bit um here maybe you can see it there you go just like that right so a little bit of flatness there might do some good but from the top down right how you're going to see the mini looks great so that's cool again i especially like the wings going forward definitely abnormal there all right so and and again a lot of like plain base and then just like a little bit right here i'm not, you know it'd be nice if the whole base was like that okay that's the first layer I have to cut the second layer sorry i did try to cut them all but i was not aware of the the dual layer here but that's okay all right. All right, next one. There you go. No. Come on. <laughs> the beak got it. This is some kind of bird here. Okay. Now again, fully textured based on this one. So again, a little bit of consistency. And I remember that being an issue in the previous ones as well. Okay. Love the fire here. The sculpted fire will look super cool painted, but it is also still noticeable based off the texture, especially later on here as it swirls up fully, um, that it is fire. So it looks good even when it's gray and a lot of little, a lot of little supports uh, that didn't get quite washed out. Um, the tree uh, trunk that he's on, super cool as well. Again, fire going around there. Um, I mean, wood and fire don't typically mix, but whatever. Uh, the ends of the tree trunks do have a little bit of a rib and stuff like that, so it still looks good even if it's flat without the, um, uh, you know, rings or anything like that. And the way this trunk is, or the way these branches are, that kind of works for me anyway. The beak is super cool, like super cool beak. I love the whole face coming out like that. And again, the headgear, very cool. Texture is fantastic um, pretty much throughout the entire thing. Just very, very neat. This will look really Cool painted and this one let's see bodies going up this way and then wings kind of arch out both ways like that and they're kind of skinny wings too very cool design i like it all right we got three more guys here's one here looks like it's the other way it's kind of interesting and again that one's gonna undo it that way and here we are. Oh no, another piece fell. All right, guys, these can be a little difficult. Okay, so looks like what fell is the back side would look like this. Exactly like that, right? So very, very cool. Uh, this guy's thick. Man, my, my goodness. Um, and this actually feels like it might need a little bit more UV treatment. I might shoot it just quickly with some UV there on the on the bottom there. The weapon is super cool, very ornate. Uh, I love this part here, the like, you know, kind of like wrap that's going on here, but these spikes are super cool. It looks like one of the spikes may have gotten a little nicked too, that's okay. Uh, the blade though, super duper cool. Love the face, again, good detail there, good texture, especially on the scales and everything like that. The webbed feet are super cool, I dig that. The cloth is always fantastic. I love that as well. And then the tail coming out of there and slithering around. Just super duper cool. The fact that they even textured it right there and back here. Very nice to see them fill that up. I like that. Um, yeah. Uh, the only thing I would say is it does look a little bit like he may be smiling. <laughs> oh, his, his like fingers, by the way. 
his like claws and stuff like that. Very, very good. Um, I think the one thing that I see here that's an issue, I did notice it just now, and this is what I talked about. This right here needs an edit. So this goes really into his skin, right? So it does, it's not laying there on, on top of it, right? So it should be like this, right? Which is fine. I mean, it's a little thick, but whatever. But this is going into his leg almost the whole way and then like through his toe, right? So that, that toe is being intersected. You can see how deep it goes into his foot there. So this needs to be pulled out a little bit and uh, just updated to really go around his, his foot and uh, on the outside of his leg. Uh, but that little small edit aside, and again, this is like, this is what I did for, for a uh, primal, uh, <laughs> uh, minis like the whole time is this really look at them from a detail perspective at that case, just so we can get them really nice. Um, yeah, love the like cloths here and stuff like that. Just really, really good. Yeah. Very cool. We had to fix, fix the warping there. And again, very easy to do on a 3d print. It's what I was looking for here, but this one actually looked pretty good there. It's really just right there, right? A little bit of warping there, perhaps then. And that's about it. So very cool. I like it. Okay, two more. Where is the end? Hello? <laughs> Where are you? Aha, uh -huh, right here. Okay. This is gonna be a fun one. And is it broken? Hopefully not, hopefully not. Oh, it's not, look at that, a full one. Okay, got that out of the way. Ta-da! Very cool, very cool. Again, I love the sides of these guys. I really like it when minis are like not centered, so this guy's all the way in the back. That means that his base is big enough to where he doesn't like topple over. Also appreciate it, of course. But then you have this like grand like look to lead up to him which is awesome his legs look fantastic um once again i feel this is um going into the leg a little bit uh it just seems to not like like the the texture seems to keep going this way instead of being rippled uh to kind of interact with his legs so a little touch up there uh sleeves look good again they have those like little like ridges around it which are awesome the claws look awesome the wings look good and they match the rest of the wings that i've seen in the game which is very appreciative um Oh, that's cool. Again, you got this disc with the Eye of Raw there, which looks super awesome. The staff, again, probably need to be ABS or thickened up. I'd prefer ABS, of course, so there's a little bit of a, of a post there. So uh, we can always clean that up. The blade looks cool. And again, the Eye of Raw there as well. And it look, kind of looks like a beak. Match as well. Love the open beak, by the way. That's cool. Just a cool mini. And again, to give you kind of a sense of scale here, here is a normal guy. And then here is this this god here. So quite a big difference. That would certainly be a little humbling. <laughs> Last one. This one's big, guys. So I am pumped. All right. I think this is just another little alligator. Well, not a little alligator. Oh yeah, this is like a this is a giant guy. All right. So here is this monster. Very, very big. He's got like freaking birds on top of him. He's so big. That's freaking awesome. Love the like draped bones and stuff like that. I'll check scale in a moment. Uh, the the face broken on here. The whole base looks cool, but I like the like rock texture there. The hair coming off. Very neat. Um, the uh, hair uh, ending in this little cap. And then see this hair at the end is textured a little bit as opposed to flat. So that's kind of cool. The pierced bones. That's gross. Um, but you know, whatever, uh, the inside of the mouth, fantastic, nice and sculpted, looks great, especially that tongue there, the big tusks look cool, the eye, the little like webbing there, the claws gnarly, what a cool, cool, like boss monster here. Oh, these tusks here coming out of the shoulders, that's hardcore, I dig that. And again, I really appreciate the birds on top too. So let's take a person, um, maybe a person like her. And then let's see if those ribs there look about right. So um, I would say actually, yes, that seems to be the correct scale, which is great to see. In fact, the head, I would say the same thing there. I think the heads look to scale as well. Um, maybe so on the slightly small size, but it's hard because she's like wearing like a, a helmet and stuff like that, right? So 
Okay, let's take one of these ladies, the archer ladies, because they have their, though they do have a lot of hair, but I'm just trying to see, I think, again, chest-wise, fairly okay, maybe a little skinny, um, but the head, like this one, pretty close. Uh, I think the heads are a little small. I think this might be slightly small. Another interesting thing is the size of these birds, right? So if this is a person, if that's a person's head, then this bird is massive, right? That bird is like, like this, like my me can't see, but it big, big, right? Really cool texture all the way around on the base. So what a cool mini, cool final boss. And again, um, yeah, uh, you could like literally fit in his mouth, right? Like you just, <laughs> so uh, that's it for the prototype, though just the prototype of the core game. Let me zoom out a little bit and kind of see more of the minis here. As you can see, quite a bit when it comes to that, All right? Quite a bit. Um, I'm excited. I can't wait to play this. This is going to be cool. And of course, again, you get like all these guys too and stuff, little scarabs. That's it though. That is Mythic Battles is 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 fit. That'll be linked down in the description below. Feel free to check out the campaign. It's going to be launching soon, or maybe you saw this during the campaign, in which case, Hello future you, let me know how it's going. Um, either way, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more on this, other cool unboxings, news videos, stuff like that, coming soon. Take care guys, bye.